want to know a bit more about you on your childhood and your sort of to where you got to because obviously you're part of one of the biggest girl groups in the world um obviously people can find out about that but just like who influenced you when you were growing up you know in terms of your image and the looks because you do have your own styles and you're quite creative and experimental and the one thing i realized was when i worked with you you know you just close your eyes and just let me do my thing <laughs> And that was it. You said nothing, and I just had to do it, you know? So, yeah, just give me an insight and everyone else about the relationship with makeup. Well, that's the thing. I love working with creative people, and I love finding people that have their expression, and they really know what they're doing, and they come with their ideas, because I love collaborations. And I think that's why I was so willing to lean into you, is because I, you have such a plethora of ideas and creativity and you kind of use the face as a canvas and can create new characters and bring out new nuances of personalities and it was nice to be like okay create something new let's find a new part of me that you see and you kind of started that journey for me and of course reading your books which I was a huge fan of and still am um, I felt like we had a real connection when it comes to beauty and being able to just try new things and being really creative with it. Um, as a child, I was really, I wasn't, I wasn't the most confident of girls, especially when it came to my looks. I didn't look in the mirror and see beauty, unfortunately. But when I walked into the dance studio and I could start learning choreography and, and dancing, I fell in love with what I could do and what I could do with my body and what I could create and creating costumes and ideas to music. And of course, then bringing the beauty element of hair and makeup to these big shows is kind of where I really found my calling when it came to beauty. And for me, makeup was everything. When I found makeup, it was like I could finally feel beautiful. It was like the whole process of, of creating that perfect liner or finding that color or being able to cover up the acne because I had horrible acne. And of course, that takes a big knock on your confidence. Being able to create and be artistic within beauty was when I really sort of found myself. And um, I've always been experimental, probably because of the performing artist within me. It's always been about creating a picture on stage. And so I've always, from a really young age, from like the age of seven, I would go to school and hide like my blue eyeshadow that I would wear on stage in my bag so I could run into the bathroom and put my blue eyeshadow on. It looked horrendous, but that's my beauty was coming from a completely different end of the spectrum. And then I was lucky enough within the Pussycat Dolls to work with such amazing creatives like Matthew Anderson, who I think is really brilliant and helped create RuPaul and sort of throw myself into uh, the likes of Orbe, who was just brilliant at hair and created the Mohawk look. And through Pussycat Dolls, I met so many amazing creatives that I was able to sort of trust in then bringing these new looks out. Andrea Lieberman, when it came to style, like all these people helped me find the punk doll image that the Pussycat Dolls for me as an individual became. And I think, um, as far as like being able to lean into different characters and being creative with it. Um, that's kind of where it really, where it really started. And then there'd be models like Agnes Dean, who I really thought was brilliant. Kate Moss was the very first one who had those incredible high cheekbones and the way that her eyes were. You know, I was never like the all American girl. I never fit that mold and I knew that straight away. So it was those, even Uma Thurman, there was these beauties out there that just were a bit left of center and just a little bit different, but still had beauty that sort of inspired me to, to find my own beauty. And then, um, yeah, it's being able to become punk doll through working with these amazing creatives and the pussycat dolls didn't open my eyes to creatives such as Vivian Westwood, um, Agnes Dean, like I said, and, and, and researching sort of the, the punk history and seeing where it comes from. And um, that sort of set me up into just being able to play. Like I like beauty to be just a big creative play. That's when I have the most fun. And that's what that's quite interesting that you said that because obviously you said like with the acne and having all these sort of issues and covering up with makeup you were so experimental whereas when i was going through a similar thing when i was growing up with bad acne for me it was about covering but i wouldn't experiment as much because i was like oh my god i just need to cover my acne and that's it and just disguise it but then as i got older and i got a little bit better at makeup and maybe a little bit more confident i started giving myself black eyes <laughs> that's like the thing 
the thing. I was like, I like my eyes. So if I can put makeup on my eyes and make those the things that stand out the most and try and cover everything else, they won't notice. <laughs> Just in terms of, you know, being a guy and, yeah. you know, and you, and you guys were guy guys, you know, with makeup, you know, what was your relationship in terms of... For, for me, with makeup, I, like you said, I mean, I, 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 I don't necessarily take it as a compliment or otherwise that the group of uh, who I am as a person, I'm athletic and I'm quite a masculine kind of a guy. But I, 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 I think of that in a very specific, it's almost my own definition of that because when it comes to things that are seen as feminine, like makeup and doing your nails and dressing flamboyantly or anything like that, I see that as a self-expression that's within me that I, I wouldn't want to deny in any way. Like I love, I think, I think dressing up, some, sometimes I don't dress up, I can't be bothered, but sometimes I love the idea of dressing up and going out. It marks an occasion, it marks a moment, uh, whether it's a photo shoot or a dinner out or anything like that. And I would find it really strange to restrict myself in any way uh, on that. So, so if I see a jacket that I like the look of that's wild and I want to wear it, I'll wear it. If I've decided that I want to wear some makeup, then why would I not? If I want to shave my head or have a mohawk or whatever, why would I not do that to, in, in, the, in, in, in the pursuit of self-expression and enjoying yourself? And then there's the other factor that I, what, I am a model and I, I was working with the best people, yourself included. How can you not take any inspiration from any of that like some of the looks that you gave me I remember once we had like a black line right across my face all the way around there and I was and, and, and it was just it was just fun like it was you wouldn't go to the bank look, looking like that but it was just fun to do those sorts of things how would I not then go and recreate that on a night out for for, for fun um so I think that sort of and I, I really like the, the conversation about makeup because it does give you a chance to talk. People think masculine, feminine immediately. But for me, it's nothing. It, people are people and self-expression is the most beautiful thing. So that's how I feel about makeup if I'm up for it. At the moment, I don't really wear much because it, do, it doesn't sort of suit the style that I'm into at the moment. But I would happily go back to it because it's so much fun. Maybe what is the most important... Um thing to have like if you were to give someone like one thing you know to take away for them to empower them to um, keep going on and you know to be a successful what what's the one thing that they should um, do or go to or embrace or you've got to have a, an ability to sort of trust your intuition because you, you have to trust your passion you have to trust that you have what it takes and you have to be determined obviously to make it happen um, we the entertainment industry is an industry of can'ts and closed doors and no's and you have to have the persistence to go and open those doors and figure it out and take on opportunity even if it's not the ultimate goal taking those stepping stones and trusting that you'll you'll figure it out and listen to that intuition in order to get there so i think if you you do have those dreams and you have the tenacity um just the ultimate trust in in yourself really my, my, it's a similar thing, but my experience, and I'm fortunate enough with hindsight to know that I managed to do this, is to stay ready. Because you can be knocking on doors and getting nine doors slammed in your face, but one door will open. If you're not ready on that day, if you say to that person, oh, you know what, I, just give me a couple of days to hit the gym, or I went out on the weekend, so I, 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 maybe we could do it Tuesday, the door's never going to open again. And you will potentially only get one. If you're lucky, you'll get two big breaks. But be ready for that big break. It's not a case of just sitting around and waiting. This takes work. It takes a lot of work before you get anywhere near the industry to stay sharp and stay ready. You will get your break, but you've got to be ready when it comes.